This is Murph from Prospect Studios, and welcome to Tutorial Sunday, Episode 1. Now, since this being our first episode, might as well go tackle something that's a mystery to basically any new Gary's Mod 10 user, and that's Lua Coding. Now, Lua Coding is uh, fairly easy, to tell you the truth. I will basically go over where the Lua files go once you're done um, making them, how to make a fi L simple Lua file, how to code in Lua, really easy stuff by the way not the super advanced awesome stuff maybe I'll do that another time but um yeah so let's start one program I recommend you guys having is a uh, notepad plus plus you can get it from notepad plus plus dot net let's see nope nope dot org and um highly recommend it mainly because it makes your life easier now, if you don't have Notepad++, you could always uh, use the regular Microsoft Notepad. And um, you could always do it like this. Like, you'd create a new text document, you'd go inside it. In there, um, you would make it a save as file. And then click all documents. And down there, you could say, the cake is a lie. And dot Lua. And that would officially make it a Lua file right there. Now the only reason mine is uh, you see this awesome green icon there is because I have Notepad++. Hi again, highly recommended. You sh guys should probably get it if you're going to be doing coding a lot or even experimenting with coding. It'll help. Now let's go over to the basics of Lua. This is a simple function. It um, basically prints in yellow in console saying nuts. Now, a function, now what you see here you're probably like, what the hell does this mean? And I'm going to tell you what this means. Function space uh, name, basically test over here, name, it could be anything you want. And then make sure you add the two parentheses at the end because that's a common mistake everyone makes and if you don't have those two parentheses uh, they're basically there for arguments if you don't have them the function will not register and this space this whole Lua script will basically fail so make sure you have those two parentheses at the end and uh, function basically sets the name of the little thing you're doing imagine it like a folder and uh, the stuff between function and end is the stuff inside the folder that that's how I come to think of it. Now since the function is called test um, yeah the function is called test so let's go to variables nuts equals nuts is a variable one equals five is a variable and so on you could use that in uh, many ways maybe you want to make a table I guess no alright there my bad example but there's plenty of stuff you could add in between so that's how you would write variables, and uh doesn't really matter if you have one or not. It's just completely optional. And then um, one more thing to go over. For us to have a yellow printed message in console, you will need the command message. Now, you don't have to write it all fancy like mine. You could always do this and make it ugly. But uh, as you go into deeper Lua coding, it's highly recommended that you add spaces, so your code is neater um, and uh, if you were to run into any problems it would be easier for you to fix them now that's done like now we got that over with all we need to do is type end at the bottom which basically means the function ends and then we need to add a console command now con command dot add a capital A um, parentheses all this stuff right here is extremely important the stuff that goes inside the quotation marks is the functions name and then uh, and the quote and the functions name with another quotation mark at a comma space and then you would write the console command I wrote tests just for the hell of it but we could write one two three four five so you know what oh wait okay no well I guess we could do that but I don't want to do that because it, it's a different story. We'll just write hello and it'll say nuts. Once that's done, you would basically hit save. Again, this is for Notepad++. You could do the same thing in um, 
in the regular notepad, it it would just be a reasonable amount difficulter because you won't get the full image of what you're seeing. So once you've done that, there's uh, two ways you can put this into your Gary's Mod 10 directory. I know my local disk C is almost full. I still have to go clean that up. But uh, yeah, you saw my terabyte hard drive over there. <laughs> now we would basically go here. I mean, go to program files, Steam, Steam apps, your username, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod. Now in here, you'll see all of these folders. Um, one option is like you could hardwire it, I guess you could call it hard hardwiring, and um, that would basically be in the Gary's Mod Gary's Mod directory. In there, you would click the folder Lua, and inside there, if you don't see an auto run folder, you would make one. In there, you would make a client folder, and inside the client folder, you would drag and drop your Lua file. In my case, it's called test, but again, the file's name doesn't matter unless you're making game modes or something more complicated. And if you are doing that, you wouldn't be watching this video since this is for beginners. So you would basically drag and drop that there. But I'm not going to do that because there's always the add-on way of making this. Now, to make this, an ad to make this in an add-on format, all you would need to do is make a new folder in desktop. In my case, I already have it made. It could be called anything you want. And inside there, you would need to have an info text. The, um, the info text information will be on the description box below. And once you've got that done, you would basically need to make the other folders that you would see in Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod directory. I shouldn't have closed that, damn it. Now, right here, if you compare the first Lua folder to the Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod directory, you would see a bunch of folders, right? But uh, since we're only editing Lua files, I mean, since we're adding a new Lua file, you only need to make a Lua folder. Now, if you were to add a, um, um, model, material, map file, you would have materials, models, maps, and etc. And inside there, you would create other folders. Now, just like the one you see in your original directory, this has Odoron, you don't need includes because this is completely different. And inside Odoron you would have client, just like there. And then you would have test.lua. You know, I'm not going to remove it because it's the same thing as in desktop. So that's uh, basically it. Once that's done, you would come here. Wait, what did we set the uh, function to? Hello. Okay, then maybe we should probably... Uh, replace them because the one in there says test once that's done um, you would do that and all you would need to do next is uh, put Gary's put the first Lua folder or whatever you'd name your folder into your Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod 10 directory and again this tutorial was meant for basic like if you ever wanted to learn out of Lua this this is basically what you would need to watch so next, we would need to launch Gmod, and I will see you guys inside Gmod. Because uh, Hypercam only records so much, so I have to go switch to Fraps. Sorry. Now that we're in Gmod, all you would need to do is enable Developer Console to go enable it. You would go to Options, Keyboard, Advance, and you would just check Developer Console. Once you have done that, um, I will... Well, you would basically type the console command there. Notice how it doesn't work, because, uh, like, notice how you don't get anything, because you haven't launched the game yet. So let's go and launch a single player game, or multiplayer, whatever you would like to do. Doesn't really matter, since it's a client based, well, it's a client side function. And once we're inside the game, we'll have to wait. Still, uh, notice how Gmon got itself a new, brand new update. Kind of makes it look lighter than the old one. And ignore any background sound you hear, especially the bird. It's really early here. Well, when I made this video, at least. Alright, so now that we're inside the game, all you would need to do is go to your console. 
Wait, let's go all the way down. And then we shall type hell low. And it says nuts. Hello. Nuts. Huh. And uh yeah. You basically now know how to code simple, simple commands in Gmod 10. Um, again, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any feedback on making this better, and I know I'm sounding like a teacher or a professor or a movie, I, I don't know. Do you guys have any other examples? Never mind. Anyway, if you guys have any feedback, leave a comment below telling me what they could be. And yes, I noticed how I screwed up in a part of the code. Uh, the fixed code is below, so you guys can compare it to the code um, on your screen. This was Demur from Prospect Studios, and you just witnessed the first episode of Tutorial Sunday.